Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards and today's session is focusing around offensive transition. But before we get into this week's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and if you missed last week's video, click on the link above. Okay, so moving into the first part of this week's session, we're going to be looking at some 2v2s and 3v3s to then transition into a 4v4 scenario, so reacting to losing the ball, which is what we're focusing on this week. But before we get started, let's have a, have a look at the equipment we have for this week and how many players we're working with. Okay, so in terms of the players this week, we've got 16 outfield players, okay, and two goalkeepers. Now with goalkeepers, if you only have one goalkeeper or no goalkeepers, try and obviously if you're working with younger players, using a parent or a coach, or you can even try and use smaller sided goals so the players have to get closer to the goal to finish. Um, but try and adapt to it as much as you can, um, but try and enable that you've got somebody in the goal. So there's a bigger goal for the players to aim at really, to make it more realistic. In terms of equipment, we've got balls, bibs, cones, poles if you have them, and obviously your goals, if you don't have goals, try and use poles, and you can make them um, different sizes, so small sided goals, and then larger goals, which is better to reenact um, a game situation. So moving into the first part here, the setup, which we have, okay, we're gonna have um, 40, 30 yards of depth, and we're gonna go 40 yards of width. Okay, so the two wide areas here are gonna be 10 yards each, and the middle area is gonna be 20 yards, and then 30 yards across. So you're going to split your group into two groups, okay? So if you have less players, let's say you have 12, you can have six on each team and you can just be, you know, some players will have less rest than others um, and you can just change the way you want to work with different numbers. So you're going to number the players one to four across. So it can be one, two, three, four. So if that side goes from um, left to right, this side will come the opposite way, okay? So then it'll be one, two, three, four, which means they've got to cover more ground. So you can shout two and three, or three and four, one, two, three. So first off, it can either be a 1v1 scenario, a 2v2 scenario, or a 3v3 scenario, okay? With the four players at the front, okay? So what we're looking to do first is attack the goal, okay? So the small side of goals don't come into play until the second phase of play, all right? So what we'll do is we'll say one and two. So this side will get the ball, which means these two players will attack and these two players will defend, okay? So it's covering that ground quickly, okay? So it's reacting quickly, getting in, Trying to, stop the, trying to stop the team from scoring, okay? But what we're looking for now is the greens, okay? As soon as that ball, um, if they win it back, these are still looking to score a big goal, okay? But what we're looking for is the greens, they're trying to attack quickly, score a goal instantly. The coach will then play into the other two players on the blues, so the blues will then attack, okay? So we'll have these two players come in, and then we'll have these two players transition in as well, okay? So then we have all of the small side of goals in play, so the blues are attacking that way. And what we're looking for then is to retain some shape, okay, put pressure on the ball and try and stop them scoring, but also trying to stop them play through the sides, okay? So then what we're going to do is a point system. So it's one point if they come down the side and play through, okay? And it's two points if they attack the goal, okay, and score, okay? So for them, we're trying to then force them into central areas, okay, by giving them um, a higher scoring points, okay, by attacking centrally, because that's where we can get players around the ball, okay? We can isolate them and then when we win the ball back, we can go and score as well. So the ball, unless it goes out to the side or a shot goes wide, we carry on until someone try and scores a point. Okay, so the blues, we're trying to attack. So for the greens, it's getting into shape quickly, putting pressure on the ball. Okay, when the ball goes wide, can we get out there and back it up? Okay, try and um, prevent runs in behind. Okay, if we do, don't follow it too quickly. Okay, because if there's pressure on the ball, can we stop the ball coming inside? Okay, so we've got going here more chances for, play in, for players to play in. So being smart as well with our movement, being aware of the players around us. So then if we win the ball back, okay, we're looking to transition. Again, quickly, the Blues will try and retain some shape. And then as a the Greens, we're looking to go and score in the goal. Okay, so each team's got chances to score. After the play's finished, all the players go back to their start points. Okay. So obviously your wingers and your fullbacks can go into the wide areas. And your more central players, your strikers, centre midfielders, centre backs, can start more centrally. Ball will start with the coach again, and then this time the Blues will go first. So then, obviously, you've got a different group of players, and then after, the, after this group of players, you can maybe change it up again so the Blues go first again. Uh, this time, just keep changing it up. So then you might say one, two, three, so then you'd have a 3v3 scenario. Okay, so then you'd have these three players coming in, 
Same again, trying to score centrally. Okay. Once we transition, the Greens will then get the ball. Other player will come in from each side and then it becomes the 4v4 scenario with the Greens trying to obviously punish the opposition quickly. The Blues looking to react quickly, retain some shape and then win the ball. We will now move into our first animation before moving on to part two of this week's session. Now moving into part two of this week's session, we're now looking at a possession and transition game. Okay, so one team's aim is to keep possession, one team's aim is to win the ball back and score, so then the team who's had possession is how we react to losing the ball. Okay, can we get players around the ball to win it back quickly? So in terms of the setup, we're gonna go 40 yards of width and 40 yards of depth, and we're gonna have four corner zones, okay, just split off just a few yards each side, so it can be three yards down, three yards across, and then you just gradually uh, then you just put the line across. Okay, we don't want to be in a square taking up too much room, okay, because the players can move freely in and out of it. So we have a halfway point here. This is for the greens with the defenders. The defenders must, so they've got two sets of four, okay, so they're only out four defenders, okay, in each zone, okay. So when the ball's in here, these four, defend, these four players will be defending. When the ball transfers into here, these four will be defending, okay. The blues in possession can use the goalkeeper as well. They're allowed to move anywhere they want in possession, okay. But once they've retained possession in the zone, okay, they must always have two players occupied in these areas, okay, which is where okay, we can make the pitch quite big to play through and then have to switch to the side. When the ball is in the other half, the two players who are in here can move into, the, into, this, into um, this zone here, okay, so they can be a link in possession. So the ball might get played into them, they retain it, they get players involved, and once players get over, okay, we've got enough bodies, that's when we can look to get players back into um, the small zones. So what we're looking for these guys to do is keep, keep possession. So it can be, maybe every time they switch to play, they get a point. Every 10 passes is a point. So it's giving them something to achieve, okay? And they're not just keeping possession for possession C. Okay, so obviously the play will start with the coach. Everybody can play, can start with the coach as well. So ball gets played in, gets played into this side. We're looking for these players to come across. Okay, so they're gonna have a 4v4 usually. In the middle, it's gonna be 6v4 plus the goalkeeper, which can make it a 7v4. You know, if a player plays into here, into one of the players in the zones, they can drive in, somebody else takes their place to create space, then we have to play in, and we can even just drive to the other side and use other players. Okay, so then if the greens win the ball back, what we're looking for then is the blues to react quickly, okay, the players get off the zone, okay, and they're gonna try and either transition to the other side, which is why we're asking these players to step up, okay, because otherwise it's a four versus the goalkeeper, whereas if it's a four v two, okay, we can try and contain them centrally and get players working back in. So your fullbacks get back into position, midfielders get back into when that ball does get played in. You might go try and go down the channel. You get players transitioning, okay, and winning the ball. And then once we've won the ball, can we retain possession? Okay, keep it moving. And again, the greens are locked into their zones. When the greens win it back though, okay, they're allowed to support the attack. So if this player here wins the ball and plays in, okay, we can have two players supporting as well. But the blues getting back in. Same again with the Blues. They're always going to have two players in here in case the ball transitions. We don't want to overcompensate, okay, and win the ball, and then we've got no options to play high. All right, so the main focus is containing contain possession for as much as we can, okay, looking to switch the play, lots of movements. When we lose the ball, reacting quickly, okay, showing urgency to win the ball back, showing aggression, okay, not just running after the ball, but we're putting pressure on the ball and then getting players around it, okay, to stop attacks going forward. We will now move into our next animation, before moving on to this week's four corner model. Okay, so we're taking a look at this week's four corner model. Starting off with technical and tactical, okay, we're looking at retaining some shape, 
when we lose the ball. Okay, so it's all well and good when we lose the ball, just running after it. Okay, but if we're leaving space in behind, we're leaving gaps for the opposition to play through. Okay, it's pointless just running after it. Okay, so we've got to make sure when we lose the ball. So when we're saying in part two, with two defend two players stepping up in possession. Okay, we're retaining shape. So when we lose the ball, it's harder for the greens to transition and play into the other half of the pitch. Okay, and then if we've got players in wide areas. Okay, they can narrow off quickly. Okay, and prevent balls through the lines as well. And then we can look to apply pressure with players who are up above and near the ball that's what we can do that's where we can apply the pressure so angles and distances not getting too close to the ball okay not getting too close to the opposition because if we get too close it's easy them to spin out okay thinking of what's behind us as well uh, so making sure that with our distances okay we're timing it as well so when the ball's traveling that's where we can get there so we're putting pressure on the first touch okay when the ball's gone we get back we get away from the player okay and shut off passing lanes and then when the ball travels across okay that's when we can go again so you know if you're the left back and you're up against the right winger you don't need to go mark directly at the right winger until the ball's traveling across them so when the right back's got the ball when the midfielder is playing the ball in that's when you can go or the part from that you shut the space off, okay, and then you travel across. And then finally, pressure on the ball, okay, so we've always got to put pressure on the ball. So when you lose it, the nearest player to the ball goes and pressures it, okay, and shows them into areas where we can win the ball back. So if it's the left winger, they go and pressure, okay, they stop ball going to the right back or going out into, into the wide area. And then the other players have got to sense that and apply pressure centrally, okay, with players in behind supporting. Okay, so it's important to say to players, when you lose the ball, if you're the nearest man or if you've lost the ball, okay, and it's near to where you've lost it, go and put pressure on it, okay, and then your teammates can anticipate that as well. So looking at our awareness, so obviously we have our spatial awareness, our positional awareness, but we've got to look at, at the awareness of the opposition as well, okay, what's around us. So again, is it going to be, is the players behind us? Is the players to the side of us? Okay, if we lose the ball, okay, have we got numbers to defend? So when we move into part three now, okay, we're going to have lots of different transitions. Players are able to move anywhere they want in possession, but are locked in zones. Um, I was possession, so it's thinking of, okay, well, if we've, only, if we've only got two defenders and it's a three v two scenario, once players have pushed up, well, with, when they've got possession, he can move wherever he wants. So I need to get somebody back in. So if I can see that some, we're about to score and the whole midfielder has pushed up the pitch, get them back into position. So if we lose the ball, okay, we've got bodies behind the ball and we can prevent the counter-attack. Reacting quickly, okay, so that pressure on the ball, okay, that retaining shape, everything matters. It, it doesn't matter unless we react quickly. So reacting to that loss of possession, okay, trying to win the ball back, but no one, okay, what's my role as possession? Where does the manager want me to be? So as the coach, it's relaying that onto the players in, uh, as much as we can. And then finally, aggression. Okay, so being aggressive to win the ball back. Okay, you can't just chase after the ball aimlessly. You've got to look to apply pressure. Okay, you've got to be aggressive. Okay, so then moving into our physical corners, our strength, our speed and our ABCs. So being strong to win the ball back, speed to cover the ground quickly, to react, okay, and apply the pressure and then the ABCs to turn, okay, go different directions, shuffling backwards, shuffling sideways, getting up to the ball and getting back. And then finally, our, four, um, our social corner, communication. So players in behind, talking to the players in front, telling players to get into position, organising each other, okay, so getting your wide players tucked in, okay, getting the players in front, applying pressure, but making sure you're closing the gaps in behind as well. And then finally, encouragement, okay, so encouraging players to go and chase after the ball, to be aggressive, to show that anticipation to win it back, and then when we win it, okay, we're looking to score quickly. Now moving into the final part of this week's session. We're now moving into a small side of game based scenario, okay, focusing on attacking, okay, so in possession the player is going to be free to move and out of possession they're going to be locked into zones. In terms of the setup, we're doing 50 yards of depth, okay, so 25 yards each zone and then the width is still going to be 30 yards. So we have our two goalkeepers, like I said, if you don't have two goalkeepers, a coach, a parent, or you can use small sided goals, so then it's harder for the players to finish, okay, so they've got to get nearest to the goal, if it's, you know, seven side goals, or if you use a pole and it's just a few yards apart, um, but again, if you don't have goals, you can maybe put a couple of zones in instead, or even end zone for the players to dribble into to score, so what we're going to be looking at, we're going to focus on the greens being in possession, okay, so the coach will play into the greens, when your team has the ball, you're free to move, okay, so this play might play in centrally, okay, and you might get two players bombing on, okay, and you play through, to go and score. You can drive in, like say in possession, you're free to move wherever you want. But what their players have to realize is, when they lose the ball, okay, so if the Blues win it back here, or the keeper saves it, the keeper's then on that team. If the keeper saves it, okay, the Blues are now in possession, which means the Greens are locked into their zones. So if these two players, okay, go into here, obviously they've got a 6v4, well, a 6v5 with the goalkeeper, but if the ball gets into this area here, okay, 
it's a 4v2 scenario and it's easier for them to score. So what we want to see is, is if the Greens get the ball and they're going forward and you see the left back bombing on, and you see the right back bombing on, talk to the centre mid, centre midfielder, they play a pass forward to then, okay, just drop back into here to, get, to make it safe, okay? So then they've still got a chance of pressing up, okay? But they've still got it, but they've got that cover in there to make it a 4v3. Same with the right back, just pull yourself in when the ball goes on the right hand side, can even come in centrally to drop back in, okay? So as soon as the ball's lost, they're locked in, okay? So, but if the green score in here, the green score, then the blues will get the ball, so it's reacting, okay, as quick as we can. You can do it where if the team scores, the same team will get the ball and they go and attack the other side, okay? Or you can do it where the other team gets the ball and they're looking to win it back. It's however you want to do it. You can maybe do the first part of the session where the other team gets the ball, and then the second part of the session can be that the same team gets the ball, and obviously it'll just get played into the same area and you go and attack the other side with them players still being locked into the zone. So what we're looking for is if we lose the ball in here, okay, we're putting pressure on the ball, okay, to stop them playing out, to win the ball high. And then if they do play high into here, okay, defending that counter-attack. So right now it's a 4v4, but then you might get two players bombing on again, like we say, to make it a 6v2. So then these players in here, okay, closing the gap. So if they do try and transition into this area, it's harder for them. So then they get a 6v4 scenario, okay, defend them one side of the pitch, so retaining that shape, but we still got to put pressure on the ball, okay. So we've got players in here, so that, that, this isn't the danger right now, okay, so we're trying to stop the ball going into here, whereas if we have players dropped off and dropped off here, okay, it's easy to play through and you can go and score, whereas if we get players across, okay, it's hard for them to play through, so then if they do try and play into here, okay, then we can get pressure on the ball, and again, we get the other players dropping in, try and win it back, and then look at that, go and attack the other side, coming in, okay, keeper comes out, we square it, and then we score, okay, so it's a very high intense. Uh, intensity game, the tempo is good, okay, the ball moves quickly, there's lots of transitions, so it's down to the players, react quickly, show that aggression to win the ball, okay, showing that awareness around them, the spatial and positional awareness of the opposition too, okay, that speed and strength without the ball, and then the communication and organisation. So everything we've done previously is working into this small side of the game. We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session. Thanks for watching this week's video. For more content, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Also, we have a huge announcement coming soon, so make sure to stay tuned, and we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.